What is petrified wood? A rock, mineral, crystal, or a gem? When you get to the end of this short discussion, you will know exactly what it is. Welcome to Finding the Crystal Road. I'm your host, Dino. Today, I want to take you on a journey, not through space or some exotic place, but through time, millions of years of it, possibly hundreds of millions of years, about a remarkable wonder of nature back then, wood trees. They're still here, but they're not wood anymore. Imagine a towering tree, standing tall in a lush, vibrant green forest. Perhaps it's a redwood, a conifer, or an ancient fern. As time goes, the earth changed in a violent way. Through some natural event, like a volcanic eruption, a landslide, meteor impact, or a flood, this tree is buried rapidly, shielded from the oxygen that would normally cause it to decay. This burial is the first crucial step in an extraordinary transformation. These trees, when they died, didn't simply rot away. Rivers swollen by downpours of violent weather changes would carry these fallen logs along with volcanic ash and sediment and deposit them in low-lying areas. This volcanic ash was the crucial ingredient. Waters rich in silica would dissolve and then permeate the porous wood of these buried trees. Slowly, painstakingly, over countless thousands of years, the silica-rich water replaced the organic material of the wood, molecule by molecule. It was a process of mineralization, a geological alchemy that turned perishable wood into enduring stone. Then, tectonic forces deep within the earth began to uplift the land. The ancient floodplain was pushed slowly skyward, and as the land rose, the climate began to change again. The once lush environment dried out. Rivers shrank. The vibrant forest gave way to the arid landscape of today. Wind and water over millions of years eroded the softer layers of rock and sediment, exposing the hardened, rainbow-colored logs that have been buried deep beneath the surface. The result is a geological marvel. Petrified wood retained the intricate growth rings, the bark texture, even the subtle patterns of wood grain, all perfectly replicated in quartz, chalcedony, and opal. The vibrant hues we often see, the reds, yellows, browns, even blues and greens, are not from the original tree, but from the trace minerals present in the permineralization. Iron oxides give us reds and yellows, while manganese can contribute to the pinks and oranges, and copper help yield the blues and the greens. Each piece of petrified wood is a unique masterpiece of natural art, a testament to geological time and chemical alchemy. Beyond its aesthetic beauty, petrified wood holds immense scientific value. It provides paleontologists and paleobotanists with invaluable insights into ancient ecosystems, climates, and types of flora that thrived millions of years ago. By studying the growth rings, scientists can deduce past weather patterns, and by identifying the species of the petrified trees, they can reconstruct ancient forests. Petrified forests, like the famous one in Arizona, which is called the Petrified National Forest, are open-air museums showcasing vast landscapes transformed into stone. These sites remind us of the incredible power of geological processes and the delicate balance of life 
and the environment over unimaginable time scales. So, back to our original question. Is petrified wood a rock, a mineral, a crystal, or a gem? The truth is, it's a fascinating blend of all these classifications. In fact, we can even add an extra, a fossil. At its core, petrified wood is a fossil. It's the ancient remnants of trees where the original organic material has been completely replaced by minerals over millions of years. This incredible process is called permineralization and it allows the wood's intricate structure to be preserved in stone. Since petrified wood is made up of various minerals that have replaced the original wood, it's scientifically categorized as a type of rock, specifically a sedimentary rock formed through petrification. While the wood itself isn't a mineral, the material that replaces it is. Most often this is silica, silicon dioxide, which is quartz, uh, chalcedony, agate, and opal. So petrified wood is a rock composed of these minerals, or sometimes considered a mineraloid because of its varied composition. The silica that replaces the wood often crystallizes. For example, quartz is a crystalline mineral. Because of this, petrified wood has a crystalline structure due to the countless tiny crystals that make it up. Though it's not a single large crystal like a pure crystal point. Many beautiful pieces of petrified wood are cut and polished for jewelry or decorative items. Its attractive appearance, durability, and it has a mole's hardness scale of 6.5 to 7, which is very hard. It has the ability to take a high polish, and it makes it a popular gemstone or a gem material. Essentially, petrified wood is a wonderful example of nature's artistry, showcasing how something once living can be transformed into a durable, beautiful, and complex geological specimen. So, the next time you encounter a piece of petrified wood, whether you see it in a museum or a rock shop, or perhaps in a natural setting like the Petrified National Forest in Arizona, take a moment to appreciate its profound story. It's not just a rock. It's a whisper from the past, a fossilized echo of life, a stunning example of nature's artistry and patience. I hope you found our journey down this crystal road together interesting. If you did, i deeply appreciate a like. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Each week, we'll continue to uncover fascinating and often overlooked details about the wonderful nature that surrounds us.